وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In this episode inshallah ta'ala I want to speak about having good manners towards your neighbors My beloved brothers and sisters this blessed sharia that we have sharia al-islam the religion of al-islam ja'at bi makarim al-akhlaq wa rafi' al-adab it has come with good manners and good etiquettes good ethics is found in the religion of al-islam islam has so told us and has spoken to us about all of good interaction that we need jami'ul mu'amalat every type of interaction that we need to do with someone our religion has told us about it which shows that this religion is a very comprehensive religion a very great religion mimma yadullu ala kamaliha wa shumuliha wa azamatiha all of this really shows how great and how comprehensive the religion of al-islam is islam and the sharia of al-islam it tackles every part of our life what we need to do and what we need to say all of the jawanib all of the aspects in life whether we it be our children whether it be our parents whether it be our neighbors whether it be our friends whether it be our students whether it be our teachers yani there is nothing except our religion has told us about it falillahi alhamdu wal minnah praises to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala ma manna wa tafaddala in the blessings that he has bestowed upon us by giving us a religion like this a comprehensive religion that brought to us our salvation we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa nas'aluhu jalla fi ulah an yuwaffiqana ajma'ina li husn al istimsak bi adabiha at tayyibah wa akhlaqiha al 'azima we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the ability all of us to hold on to these good manners and to live by it and to adorn ourselves with it from one of the great etiquettes that islam emphasized on it encouraged us to come with is al inayatu bi haqq al jar al inayatu bi haqq al jar to give importance to give a lot of consideration to the rights of your neighbors wa ma adraka ma al jar what do you really know about the neighbors brothers and sisters the neighbor has a very big place in Islam. فَقَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَهُ حَقَّ Allah placed for the neighbor rights. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged the slaves to come with that rights of the neighbors. Our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many ahadith, extensive ahadith, he has emphasized, he has clarified the rights of the neighbors. وَعِظَمِ شَأْنِهِ And how important it is. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the rights of the neighbors next to his rights subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala ta'ala, Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 36, وَعَبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْجَارِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا الله سبحانه وتعالى إن آية He mentions his rights that we worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and we do not associate partners with him. Allah wa ta'ala talks to us about our neighbors. Allah talks to us about our relatives and our, our family members. Allah talks to us about the orphans and the poor. And in there Allah wa ta'ala mentions 
your neighbors. So the neighbor was mentioned in the context of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the ending Allah wa ta'ala, he said, Allah does not like a person who has two qualities. The first quality is مختالن, a person who is self-deluded. And the second one is فخوراً, boastful, conceit, arrogant, full of himself. A person who possesses those two qualities, who is self-deluded and boastful, لم يرعى لجار حقه, he can never give the rights of, the of his neighbors. He can't give anyone their rights rather, because in his heart is what? من الخيلاء وكبر. His heart is filled with arrogance. He's boastful. He's deceited. He has conceit in him. As for the one who is a believer, who's mutawadr, he's muti'al li mawlah, obeys his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is the individual that can come with the rights of his neighbors. Our mother Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Samiatu I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqulu, I heard the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Ma zala Jibreel yusini bil jari, that Jibreel was consistent and continuous in advising the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in regards to the right of the neighbors until I thought to myself that Jibreel would make the neighbors from the inheritors, the ones that inherit a person. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma zala Jibreel يوصيني بالجاري حتى ظننت أنه سيورثه متفق عليه جبريل he said to نبي الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم give the neighbors their rights give the neighbors their rights he emphasized on this the messenger said he was consistent and he was continuous and he kept saying it حتى ظننت until I thought to myself إنه سيورثه that he's going to make the, the neighbors from those who inherit you. The word mazala in the Arabic yufidu takrarul wasiya. Here it shows the word mazala, it shows the continuation and the consistency of Jibreel when it came to the neighbors. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he realized from that persisting of Jibreel, Nabiullah Muhammad, he felt from there, he sensed from there that. This is not something very light. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was the advice that Jibreel gave to our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding the neighbors? That we be very dutiful towards them. It is that we honor them. That we stand up, we stand up for their affairs. We give them companionship and etc. Hatta dhanantu anna sayyuarithu. That they're going to inherit. Yani the people who inherit you are the people who are the most closest to you. I thought Jibreel was going to bring the neighbors so close to us that they're going to inherit from us. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asir radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he said, al Rasulillah from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anahu qala that the Prophet said, khayru al-ashabi indallahi khayruhum li sahibihi, wa khayru al-jirani indallahi khayruhum li jarihi, rawahu Ahmed, wa sahahahu al-albani rahimahullah. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asir, he said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, khayru al-ashabi, عند الله, the best friend, the best companion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the one that is the best companion to his, his companion, to his friend. وَخَيْرُ الْجِيرَانِ And the best neighbor عند الله to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is خَيْرُهُمْ لِجَارِهِ The one that is the best to his neighbor. And Imam Ahmad narrated this in his Musnad. And an Imam Al-Tirmidhi narrated it in his Sunan. وَصَحَاحُ الْأَلْبَانِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ And Sheikh Nasr رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ authenticated he authenticated it. Rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'a. On the authority of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the messenger said, arba'un min al-sa'adah, four things are from the happiness. Al-mar'atu al-salihah, an obedient wife, a righteous wife, wal-maskanu al-wasi'a, 
a vast, spacious residence, a spacious house. Waljaru Salih, a noble, righteous neighbor. Walmarkabul Hani, and a good riding beast. Warba'um min ashshaqawati, and four are the cause of sadness and depression. Al-jaru su a bad neighbor. Wal-mar'atu su a evil spouse, wife. Wal-maskanu dayyiq and a very tight house. Wal-markabu su and a bad riding beast. Ibn Hibban narrated that. These are the four things that bring happiness. Having a wife that is righteous. She's righteous to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She does what her Lord Allah commands her. She stays away that which Allah told her to stay away from. She's noble and she's good to her husband and her children. She's good to her parents. She gives everybody their rights. That is the first sign of achieving happiness. Al-mar'atu saliha. The second one is wal-maskanu a spacious house. If your house is very tight, it brings sadness because every step if you take, you bump into one child and the other. Sometimes you need space, different places to be in. Waljar is salih and a good neighbor, a righteous neighbor. Walmarkabu Hani and a good riding beast. If your car keeps breaking down all the time, then this is something that stresses you out. It takes away the happiness. The four things that bring sadness is opposite to that. Al Jaru Su, an evil neighbor. A evil wife, a tight house, and a bad riding beast. Your car keeps breaking all the time. Nafi' ibn Abdul Harith, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Anil Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, min sa'adatil mar'il muslim, the things that bring the happiness to a Muslim is al maskanul wasi' having a big, spacious house. والجار الصالح having a righteous neighbor والمركب الهني and having a good riding beast رواه البخاري في الأدب المفرد الإمام البخاري narrated this in his أدب المفرد لا ريبة there is no doubt أن من نعم الدنيا وسعادة العبد from the things that bring about happiness and from the things that bring joy is أن يكرم بالجار الصالح that you are honored from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a good neighbor. A righteous slave is your neighbor who you can learn the religion with. Your children can sit with his children and you're going to learn good with each other. You are both on the same page when it comes to akhirah. You are both driven to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This one, this neighbor is someone to... Some of the great scholars of the Salaf rahimahumullah Whenever they would reside somewhere before they even check the house, they would ask about the neighbors. Who is this person I'm going to be living next to? Because the neighbor influences your children. He influences you. He can become a harm and a problem for you. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ta'awwadhu billahi min jari su'i fi dari al-muqami, fa inna al-jara al-badi muhawwalun anka. The Messenger وسلم, he said, Seek refuge in Allah from a bad neighbor in a house that you are permanently going to reside in. And in some places, you're not going to be there for too long. You're probably going to be there for a short period of time. You're traveling. But if it's a place of muqam, a place of permanent residency, to have a bad neighbor, it harms you. The neighbor that's going to leave you, whether it be the Bedouin one, whether it be you're traveling, that one's going to go. He's not going to stay forever. Like in the one that you're going to be living with him forever. This is going to be your house and most likely going to be your children's house and their children and their children. Seek refuge in Allah from having a bad neighbor. Ta'awadhu billahi min jari su'i fi dari al-muqami. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that. Abu Huraira also narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر the one who believes in Allah and the day of judgment فلا يؤذي جاره do not harm your neighbors 
do not cause your neighbor's harm. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ The one who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment. فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَهُ Honor your guest. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ The one who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment. فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْكُتْ Let him say good or be silent. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. أَبِي شُرَيْحٍ الْخُزَاعِيَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُ أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that the messenger said, he said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ The one who believes in Allah and the day of judgment, فَلْيُحْسِنْ إِلَى جَارِهِ Be dutiful to your neighbor. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ The one who believes in Allah and the day of judgment, فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَهُ Honor your guest. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ The one who believes in Allah and the day of judgment, فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْكُتْ Let him say that which is good or be silent. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. And another wording, it says, فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَهُ Let him honor his guest. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned Iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believes in the Day of Judgment. What will he or she do? They will make sure that they do not harm their neighbors. What does it mean, Al-Iman? It is meant by it, Al-Ma'bud, the one who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who also mentioned the one who believes in the Day of Judgment, the day where you're going to be accounted for everything that you do or say, the day where you're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to be accounted for your deeds and what you've accumulated in the dunya. Allah says in the Quran, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ Anyone who does مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ A mustard seed of deeds of good يَرَهُ He will see it يوم القيامة وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ And anyone who works, who does مثقال ذرة A mustard seed of evil شرا يرى He will see it the day of judgment That is the day that If you believe in that day Then you're going to make sure that What you say to your neighbor What you do to your neighbor Is going to be counted based on مثقال ذرة ذرة brothers and sisters Here inshallah ta'ala I'm going to inshallah ta'ala بإذن الله الكريم Mention That which is necessary for the neighbor in terms of rights, in terms of manners, they go back to two things. The rights and the manners that one must give towards his neighbor goes back to two things. The first one is honoring your neighbor, being dutiful towards your neighbor. This is the first part of مَا يَنْبَغِي لِلْجَارِ مِنْ حُقُوقٍ that which is required from you towards your neighbor is to give a lot of consideration towards being dutiful to your parent, being dutiful to your neighbor, and showing excellence to your parent, to your neighbors, to your to your neighbors. Now the Sharia has left this unrestricted. Faliyukrim, honoring. The neighbor is unrestricted. It is not mentioned how, where, what a person must do. The reason for that is what? لِيَشْمَلَ So it, so it can encompass كُلَّ إِكْرَامٍ Every type of honoring. وَإِحْسَانٍ And every type of excellence. That is what it is. So that every neighbor can compete with the other neighbor in making sure that they are fulfilling each other's rights. The second is You prevent from your neighbor. You make sure that there comes from you no harm towards your neighbor. No verbal and no physical because this goes against الجاري, the rights of the neighbor. Now, some might say this is good, I understand it, but I want to dabit, I want a precise 
thing that I need to be doing. I really want, I want you to be precise with me because I, I really don't know what, what I can personally do for my neighbor. I'm going to give you a dhabit inshallah ta'ala. This dhabit is look at the way you love to be treated and treat your neighbor that way. وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet ﷺ, he said فَمَنْ, أب, فَمَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يُزَحَزَحَ عَنِ النَّارِ Anyone who wants to be protected from the hellfire وَيُدْخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ And he, he's placed in Jannah فَالْتَأْتِي مَنْ يَتُوا Let death come to you وَهُوَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Let death come to you and you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment وَلْيَأْتِي إِلَى النَّاسِ And come to the people Treat the people الذي يحب أن يؤتى إليه in the way that you love to be treated. الله مسلم. Also the other hadith which is لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه that you are not a true believer unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself. In another hal wording عند المسلم عند الإمام مسلم رحمه الله والذي نفسي بيدي the prophet said I swear by the Lord in which my soul is in his hand لا يؤمن عبد حتى يحب لجاره that a person is not a true believer unless he loves for his neighbor or his brother that which he loves for himself. So the babit, to know how to treat your neighbor really goes back to treat them the way that you love to be treated. Treat them the way that you love to be treated and the way that you like to be dealt with. And that last hadith really does Draw the matter home, which is Walladi nafsi biyadi. The Prophet said, "I swear by, I swear by the, the Lord, in which my soul is in His hand." La yuminu abdun. A slave is not a believer. Hatta yuhibba lijari until he loves for his neighbor that which he loves for himself. Until he loves for his neighbor that which he loves for himself. Abu Hurairah radiyallahu taala anhu. He said, "Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam qala that the messenger said, La yadkhulu jannah. He will not enter jannah." مَنْ لَا يَأْمَنُ جَارُهُ بَوَائِقَهُ The one whose neighbor does not find security from his wrongdoings, his wrongful conduct. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, you're not, not going to enter Jannah, the Prophet said. لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْ لَا يَأْمَنُ جَارُهُ بَوَائِقَهُ The one whose neighbor is suffering because of him. Wallahi, you're not going to enter Jannah because of that. Abi Shurayh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger said, Wallahi la yu'minu, Wallahi la yu'minu, Wallahi la yu'minu, the Prophet said, three times, Wallahi doesn't believe, Wallahi doesn't believe, Wallahi doesn't believe. And then the Sahaba, they said, Waman ya Rasulullah, who, who, who is this person? The messenger said, Alladhi la yamanu ja'ruhu bawa'iqah. The one that his neighbor does not find security from his wrongdoings. From his wrongful conduct. Nurahu al Bukhari, well, Imam al Bukhari narrated this. By the way, brothers and sisters, this neighbor can be a Muslim or a Kafir, it doesn't matter. It's your neighbor. Whether he's a Kafir or whether he's a Muslim, you are, Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi, you're not a believer. Wallahi, you're not a believer. Wallahi, you're not a believer. Alladhi la yu'minu jaruhu bawa'iqah. The one that your neighbor doesn't find security and safety from your wrongdoings. Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala that the Prophet said, wallahi la yu'minu, wallahi la yu'minu, wallahi la yu'minu. Abu Huraira is narrating this one. Then the Sahaba, they said, qila wa man dhaka ya Rasulullah, who is this one that doesn't believe? The Prophet said, al-jar, the neighbor, jaru la ya'manu, jaruhu bawa'iqah, a neighbor, who doesn't give security to another neighbor from his wrongdoings, from his wrongful conduct. Qalu ya Rasulallahi, the Sahabas, they said, wa ma bawa'iquh, what does bawa'iq mean? The Prophet said, sharru, he's evil. And Imam Ahmad narrated this in his Musnad. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, brothers and sisters, before I go into the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he negated iman from these people and he swore by Allah. He said, Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Look at these three things. The Prophet negated Iman from these people. He swore by Allah the Prophet and he repeated himself three times. This shows that this is a major sin. 
This alone should scare a person. Please listen to this hadith, inshaAllah ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Qala rajulun a man said, a man said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyu dhambi akbaru indallahi, what is the greatest sin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Qala the Prophet said, an tad'uwa lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqaka. It is to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's the one who created you. Qala thumma ayyu. Then the man said, okay, after that, the Prophet then said, ثُمَّ أَنْ تَقْتُلَ وَلَدَكَ خَشْيَةَ أَنْ يَطْعَمَ مَعَكَ is to kill your child, fear that he might uh, eat with you. Where am I going to get money for this child? Kill him. قَالَ ثُمَّ أَيُّ Then the Prophet ﷺ was asked on a third time, okay, after that, ثُمَّ he said, أَنْ تُزَانِي حَلِيلَ تَجَارِكَ It is to go and commit zina with your neighbor's wife. فَأَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ تَصْدِيقَهَا and then Allah Taala sent a verse to affirm that. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَٰلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said, وَالَّذِينَ well, the ones, عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ are the ones, لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرًا They do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ They do not kill النفس التي حرم الله. They don't kill an innocent person. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ And they don't go and commit zina. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَٰلِكَ Anyone who does any of those mentioned. يَلْقَ أَثَامًا That person will receive a great sin. This hadith is found in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his statement of what he said to that man is affirmed in this hadith. It's, it's affirmed in this ayah. So Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah, he mentioned in his kitab Al-Da'u al dawa which is also called Al-Jawab Al-Kafi, liman sa'ala an al-Dawa al-Shafi. Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah, he said, وَلَا بَائِقَةَ أَعْظَمُ مِنَ الزِّنَا بِمْرَأَتِهِ There is no evil you can afflict your neighbor with worse than committing zina with his wife. He leaves to work and then you go and commit zina with his wife. فَالزِّنَا بِمِئَةِ مْرَأَةٍ لَا زَوْجَ لَهَا أَيْسَرُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الزِّنَا بِمْرَأَةِ الْجَارِ Committing zina with a hundred women who have no husbands is easier than committing zina with your neighbor's wife. فَإِنْ كَانَ الْجَارُ أَخَلْ لَهُ And if the neighbor is actually your brother, or it's a قَرِيبًا مِنْ أَقَارِبِ Or it's a neighbor from your neighbor, uh, sorry, a relative from your relatives. إِنْ ضَمَّ إِلَى ذَلِكَ قَطِعَةُ الرَّحِمِ It becomes even worse. You have now come with the concept of cutting your ties of kinship. فَيَتَضَاعَفُ الْإِثْمُ Your sins will be multiplied. The worst thing you can do to your neighbor is to commit zina with his wife. A hundred women who are virgins, who've never been married before, for you to commit zina with them is easier than to commit zina with your neighbor's wife. And if their neighbor happens to be your brother, or that neighbor happens to be your cousin, a family relative, then it becomes easier even worse, because now, not only was that person your neighbor, but he was a relative, he was your brother. You've come with qati'atul rahim. You've cut the ties of kinship. You The sin is multiplied. Multiplied, high levels. May Allah protect us from that. Al-Miqdad ibn al-Aswad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأصحابه The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said to his companions ما تقولون في الزنا What do you guys think of zina? قالوا the Sahabas they said حرمه الله ورسول الله and his Messenger made it haram فهو حرام إلى قيام الساعة It is haram until the hour strikes قال فقال رسول الله لأصحابه Then the Messenger said to his companions لَأَنْ يَزْنِيَ الرَّجُلُ بِعَشَرَةِ نِسْوَةِ 
for a man to commit zina with ten women. أَيْسَرُ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَنْ يَزْنِيَ بِامْرَأَةِ جَارِهِ is worse. Uh, sorry, a hundred women, uh, t- sorry, ten women that you go and commit zina with is easier than going and commit zina with your neighbor's wife. قَالَ فَقَالْ مَا تَقُولُونَ فِي السَّرِقَةِ السرق The Prophet said, what do you say about a person who steals? The Sahabas, they said, حَرَّمَهَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ فَيَا حَرَامٌ Allah and His Messenger prohibited stealing. So it's haram. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, لَن يَسْرِقَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْ عَشَرَةِ أَبْيَاتٍ For a man to go and steal from ten different houses, أَيْسَرُ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَنْ يَسْرِقَ مِنْ جَارِهِ than to go and steal from his neighbor. And Imam Muhammad narrated this in his Musnad. This shows that the sin that is done to the neighbor is worse. The normal sin to other people is not the same as the one you do to your neighbor. If you steal from someone else, and if you steal from the neighbor, it's worse when you steal from the neighbor. Because he has a specific right on you. He's your neighbor. He's, he's, he trusted you. And here you are deceiving him. The Messenger of in this hadith, he asked him about zina. Even though, though the Sahabas all knew that zina was haram, how dangerous it is. But the reason why he did that, he wanted to show them something even worse than what they thought was bad. It is to go and commit zina with your neighbor's, your neighbor's wife. Or to steal from your neighbor's wealth or his products. There has come a hadith. It is narrated from the Prophet. In this chain of narration, there's a question. The meaning is correct. And Imam Al Tabarani narrated it in his Musnad al Shamiyin. He narrated it there. Al Jiran wa Thalathatun. The neighbors are three. The meaning is right. The meaning is right, but attributing it to the Prophet is weak. Al Jiran wa Thalathatun. The neighbors are three. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَهُ ثَلَاثَةُ حُقُوقٍ There's a neighbor that has three rights on you. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَهُ حَقَانِ And there's a neighbor that only has two rights on you. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَهُ حَقٌ And there's a neighbor that only has one right on you. The one that has three rights on you is الْجَارُ الْمُسْلِمُ الْقَرِيبِ He's your neighbor, he's a Muslim, and he's a relative. He has three rights on you. لَهُ حَقُ الْجَارِ He has the right as a neighbor. وَحَقُّ الْإِسْلَامِ And he has the rights as a Muslim. وَحَقُّ الْقَرَابَ And he has the rights as a, a relative. وَأَمَّا الَّذِي لَهُ حَقَّانِ As for the one that has two rights on you, it is فَالْجَارُ الْمُسْلِمِ It is the Muslim neighbor. He has two rights on you. لَهُ حَقُّ الْجَارِ He has the rights as a neighbor. And he also has the rights as a Muslim. As for the one who only has one right on you, it is فَالْجَارُ الْكَافِرِ It is the disbeliever who is your neighbor. لَهُ حَقُّ الْجَارِ أَمَا لَهُ حَقُّ الْجَوَارِ He has the right as a neighbor. You still have to honor him as a neighbor. Islam has come to us to honor the neighbor, regardless of what religion he upholds. Whatever ideology he believes, the neighbor should be honored, should be taken care of. Two things I told you when I said that the neighbor's rights and the manners that you have with the neighbors, the first one is you honor the neighbor. You take things to them, food. You buy things when you do shopping, you go and you get something for them. Excellence, ikram, honoring. And the second one is you protect harm from them. When you're listening to something, you put the volume low. You don't shout. If you've got children, you teach your children, neighbors. وَلِذَلِكَ mujahid. He said أن عبد الله بن عمر that عبد الله بن عمر بن عاصر رضي الله تعالى عنهما ذبحت له شاة في أهله A ram or a goat was slaughtered فلما جاء قال when he came he said أهديتم لجارنا اليهودي Did you give to our Jewish neighbor? Have you given them the meat? He repeated the question again. He said أهديتم لجارنا اليهودي Did you guys give this meal or this meat to our Jewish neighbor, did you give it to them? He said, I heard the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, ما زال جبريل يوصيني بالجار حتى ظننت أنه سيورث I heard the Prophet say that Jibreel was consistent upon the neighbor 
so much so that I thought that the neighbor will inherit us. And this falls under the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين Allah does not prohibit you from the ones that are not fighting against you in your religion and they have not taken you out of your houses. Yani they're not in war with you. They're just non-Muslims, but they're, they're, they're not causing you harm or your religion or anything. There is no battle between you and them. Allah says, Those people, what do you do? You be obedient towards them. You be dutiful towards them. You feed them, you take care of them. إن الله يحب المقصطين. الله سبحانه وتعالى loves those who are upright, just and fair. The non-Muslim that you're in war with, that you're in war with that person. You're defending yourself. You're fighting. You're, that's different. He's taking you out of your lands, driven you out of your land. He's fighting with your religion. That's another discussion. It's another non-Muslim, like in the one that hasn't got to do anything with that. You feed, you take care of them, you're dutiful towards them, you protect your harm from them. That is Islam. One of the greatest rights that the neighbor has is hifdu awrati. You conceal the shortcomings and the faults of your neighbor. وَلِذَلِكَ antara, who is a sha'ir jahili, pre-Islamic poet. قبل الإسلام antara ibn Shaddad. One of the lines of poetry he said, وَأَغُطُّ طَرْفِي إِنْ بَدَتْ لِي جَارَتِي حَتَّى يُوَارِيَ جَارَتِي مَأْوَاهَا He said, وَأَغُطُّ طَرْفِي I turn a blind eye. If there comes from my neighbor, any shortcomings, until they conceal their shortcomings and they go into their houses. I turn a blind eye from my neighbors. That's a non-Muslim poet, by the way. He's from the Mu'allaqat al-Ashara. He's from the pre-Islamic poets. He doesn't believe in Allah. He doesn't have an Islam in him. But there's one of the qualities that they had was this. They knew the neighbors and the rights of the neighbors. And they knew the Silatul Rahim, the ties of kinship, even before Islam. Today we find Walil Asaf al-Shadid, people who go and look for the shortcomings of their neighbors. They peep over the door, check what their neighbors are doing. They go at the door. Of the, I mean, some people do that. That is khiyana and deception. Listen to what the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, here. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Qila nin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulallah, O Messenger of Allah, inna fulana tan taqoomu al-layla wa tasoomu al-nahara wa taf'alu wa tasaddaqu. There's a woman, she prays at night, she fasts the day, wa taf'alu, she does, wa tasaddaqu. She gives sadaqah But she's very harmful to her neighbors She's always talking about them She's vulgar When she speaks to, she's, her mouth, her tongue towards her neighbors is very bad فقال, The Prophet وسلم, he said لا خير فيها. There's no good in this woman النادي, She's from the people of the hellfire قالوا, They said There's a woman who prays obligatory prayers وَتَصَدَّقُ بِأَثْوَارٍ And she gives out um, athwar. Yani some of the narrations specify that she gives dry yogurt. وَلَا تُؤْذِي أَحَدًا But she doesn't harm anyone. She prays the five daily prayers. She gives dry yogurt. Not that much. She's dry yogurt. She doesn't harm her neighbors. The Messenger ﷺ, he said, مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ This woman is from the people of Jannah. And Imam al-Bukhari narrated this in his kitab Adam al-Mufrad. This woman harms her neighbors. All she does is she just speaks bad about them. She causes them harm because of her tongue. This woman prays at night. So that means that she prays her obligatory prayers. She fasts all day. She gives sadaqah. She does, she does. The Prophet said, لا خير فيها. There's no khair in this woman. Here min ahli nari, she's from the hellfire. This is a very serious warning for this woman and any woman who treads on that path and any man that treads on that path. Who causes harm to his neighbor? 
whose tongue is just open towards his neighbor. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.